potatoes. Pretty stunning opening. <laughs> wow. Woo, almost Where, professional. Where did you get that? <laughs> My friend Mick made it for me. He made a couple of them, and I want to thank him for doing so. Um, I won't mention his last name, but he is a person very deeply involved in unearthing the truth about everything. So, Mick, thank you for making that. Not well, speaking truth like Mick West or something like that. At, no, at the um, not Mick Jagger either. Or maybe it was Mick Jagger. <laughs> Am I coming yes. in okay? Start a new start a new rumor. Uh, yes, Mike coming in okay, loud and clear and visually it's putting me in a trance. I know, right? I'm Between totally... that and my jukebox, we're glowing. Too. Yeah, yeah, it's all over the place. And, and honestly, what have I got to lose after what happened yesterday? I can throw out any special effects I want. Right, yeah. because everybody will believe it. In fact, let's just tell people that that actually is you in space and you're flying by holding on to the glowing microphone. Sounds legit. <laughs> you know, the yes. thing about it is, is that it's got to be real because it looks so fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Steven Spielberg actually gave me this microphone when I was on the set with him of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Interesting. I know, right? Yeah. And yesterday when I went out to, you know, go get some coffee, uh, when the Starbucks person gave me change, they also gave me a winning lottery ticket and I won $10 million wow. and out of the sky came this beautiful red orange Tesla that I suddenly <laughs> appeared in and my car, boom, disappeared and I floated home. I suppose we should clue people in who actually were under a rock or living in a cave yesterday. What what has happened? What has happened, Mark? Uh, Let's talk about fake X. Fake X. So by the numbers, SpaceX, who is owned and founded by Elon Musk, South African entrepreneur who made all of his money when PayPal went through the roof in terms of value he was the major he was the majority stockholder we're not talking 50 percent. he only owned like 11 percent stock shares but he made hundreds of millions of dollars and he turned it into billions which is now worth 20 billion or something like that okay so he's been kicking the moon mission can down the road for the last six years give or take and uh, and we've been making fun of it up, up until recently because he had no booster rocket. He had no capsule. Remember, this is the same guy that last year said he was going to take two tourists around the moon this year. And you know, unnamed so, tourists. Unnamed tourists with an unnamed crew going to send them around the moon this and year. And then they told us there would no, be no crew. It would uh, not have a crew at all. It would be well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But that I think that was automatic. I, I, you can't you can't expect people to I mean. You can't expect people to believe that. They believe there's a spaceman dummy thing riding around with its we're, hand on the steering wheel uh, circling Earth. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. People believe this. Everyone. But I mean, people are having a hard time even, I, you asked, I think it was women more than men. Like, you know, they're they're trying to pass the, the law that allows auto drive cars. You know, straight out of minority report, cars that drive themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people are going, Yeah, I don't like the you know, me being in a car that that I have no control over. It's a control thing. Kind of like people, you know, we have planes that absolutely can fly themselves, no question. But try to get someone to go in one of those planes. And Everybody wants to be in the driver's seat. I know, exactly. you know, when I'm on an airplane, it's not like I want to go up there and be the pilot, but I get worried, like, oh, you know. Why am I getting worried? Do, you, do I think I can get up there and drive or fly better than the pilot? Same thing if I'm in the passenger seat and someone right. else is driving. I think they're driving badly. So even the How idea of putting astronauts, I'm sorry, amateur astronauts in a rocket that with no no professional help and it's going to remotely drone style go around the moon and back and land. Yeah, I don't think even mainstream media, as gullible as they are, wouldn't buy it. They, they'd be like, what? Anyway, so the, the first stage of this was to test the booster rocket, which is known as the Falcon Heavy. And not to be confused with the Millennium Falcon, although there seem to be some similarities as of late. So the Falcon Heavy was just a rocket that was supposed to go up in the air. And there wasn't supposed to be really anything up there. In fact, they were just, they could have fil literally filled it with cement if they wanted to, because they were just testing, you know, the weight on top and whether it could go up. So Elon decides, oh, I will get creative 
and I will put up one of my personal cars, which in this case is a red Tesla convertible. I'm going to put that in the nose cone and I will send that up. That's what he was going to do. And in fact, he 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 joked again, his comments are just awful. He says, I, I'm going to send it past Mars because I hope that aliens will find it millions of years from now. And this this will be my legacy, my immortality type of thing. Right. So. They launched the rocket out of Kennedy, you know, out, out in Florida with three boosters attached to it. OK. The, and, oh, these three boosters are also they're going to they're going to kill two birds with one stone or in this case, three birds with one stone and then one bird with another. it doesn't really matter. So these three boosters are going up and they're going to land. Remember, they, they're, they're all big on this reusable stuff, recycling stuff. They're going to land these three boosters. Down back down near Florida, remote pilot, these three boosters back down on the ground. At the same time, they're going to deploy this roadster into the air. So the first part of the thing, you know, the the, the rocket goes up and we'll, we'll tear down the aspects of it later. Rocket goes up. The boosters separate. Two of the boosters land at unbelievable speeds. <laughs> if you believe the graphics, unbelievable speeds back down at Kennedy, literally right next to each other, literally I, I, not figuratively, literally right next to each other. The third one, because it jettisoned later, apparently was going to land somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle on a barge, which from what we can tell was unmanned. It's like, okay, so who put it out there? And since it was launch day, why wasn't there anybody out there? What are you telling me you had exactly one camera? There is no footage of that rocket doing anything out there. Everything is unpersoned, unmanned due to the fact that... Uh, what do they say? Loose lips sink ships. I mean, there's, there's, there's and even the crowds that were cheering during the fake X launch. Where were the, where were those crowds? There it was, was uh, yeah, there was like what 150, maybe 200 people in the SpaceX control room area. Right. I don't know who they are, why they weren't manning controls or anything. They might have been employees. I don't know. But the crowd noise they were pumping into the oh. feed. Go, was, go, 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 go. Like an auditorium. It was, it was not a couple hundred people worth of crowd noise. That was thousand or more people. I mean, we're talking a small concert. It was deafening. I'm going, what sort of enthusiastic BS is this crowd? And why don't they pan to that crowd? Why yeah, yeah. Why didn't we? Crowd? I mean, every once in a while, they did cut to a scene where the crowd, but every time they look at the cameras, it was straight out of, you know, uh, when you go to a stadium and you fly out the cameras on you, you're waving and stuff like that. But it's like the enthusiasm was off the charts for what the the booster test. You, I didn't not, see them pan to the crowd, so I did. Yeah, I take you'll, it back. You'll know if you you see. It, it, they didn't do it very often, and the crowd noise. Look, I'm a big audiophile. The crowd noise did not match the amount of people there. We're talking, and I know other people look at the concerts. It's that's like par for the course now in any major event, like uh, stadiums that have PA systems. You know, giant when they all do. Mm -hmm. Uh, they pipe in extra crowd noise during concerts and during athletic games. Now, oh, sure. It, it only makes sense. And people, uh, let's just bring Vegas into the picture. We're saying, depending upon what you want to believe, I don't want to get this video taken down, that, right. that noises were piped through uh, the speakers. Yeah. Possibly. So uh, the three boosters landed. And as they're doing that, they're deploying the car. And the car is unveiled. You know, it's like supposedly through explosive bolts. The capsule of this flying phallic oh. symbol opens up. I have to stop and just say in the description box of this video, there is a video that shows that and gives you the timestamp at uh, three minutes and 52 seconds into the SpaceX basically live uh, deployment of the car from inside the capsule to poof space. So it's in the description box. Click it. It's by Alice in, uh, in uh, Mandela Land. And a uh, new channel, relatively new anyway, and she deserves a subscription. But uh, subscribe to her and check that video out. It'll show you and she you can see exactly how it looks like it's in a sort of domed enclosure. And then all of a sudden, bam, it's outside. Yep. Or yeah, I mean, space, like whatever. really fast. It wasn't one of those gradual opening of doors thing. Apparently, it was literally explosive bolts. And then it was like, blink. We're okay, in, so we're why didn't the explosive bolts hit anything? Do, do they not consider that? Yeah, uh, that is do they the, not, there's not no pieces of metal or anything else falling around. That, I mean, you can just add that to the list of things <laughs> we're going to go over because there was so much wrong. Up until that point, I was going, yeah, fine. I get what they did with the boosters, which we'll we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. The, the booster thing was a whole other thing. But when the car was unveiled, it had a whole other wrinkle to it because not only was it a red Tesla convertible, 
but they had an astronaut mannequin in the freaking driver's seat with his arm <laughs> out on resting on the side of the door. You know what? I'm kind of upset they didn't use my face in my space helmet in that thing. And you're looking at it. And, and the first I had heard about this, I wasn't following the Tesla rocket, to be honest, because the, the CNN, I could already see the, the writing on the wall. CNN had said, you know, this is, they said, well, this problem, it may not work. This this thing may not even work. It may explode. There are people, you know, the, the track record of, of SpaceX, even if you believe the track record, is still awful. So I didn't even pay attention. Then all of a sudden, send, somebody sends me a snapshot of a red convertible sports car with an astronaut at it with the Earth behind it. And my first instinct was, oh, Jaron got to Photoshop or somebody got to, you know, it is it, ah, ha, ha. One of the flat earthers made a cool little meme ahead of time. I thought it was pretty funny. It's like, yeah, I get it. It's pretty funny. Then I, uh, David Weiss from DITRH says, hey, hey, come over. Jared and I are going to break break it down. I was going, oh, this thing launch. He goes, oh, yeah, man, it's a nightmare. So I go over there and they're, they're playing the feed. You know, they finally play the feed and I'm going, wait, that picture of the astronaut in the convertible, that wasn't a Photoshop. That's part <laughs> of the live feed. They're actually putting this out there as real. Yes. And I put the link to the live feed, which was two hours long. It's no longer live, of course, in the description box of this video. So you can watch what they uh, purported to be uh, live so, footage of that thing. So for those of you who were living in the cave yesterday, what we're talking about is a normal astronaut-ish type capsule with a red Tesla bolted onto the side of it, angled upward with three cameras, three selfie cameras, one on the hood facing the driver, one in the headrest facing, you know, the dash. And then, of course, the most important of all, one off the left side of the car facing the driver in profile. These cameras rotated, you know, around. And this is, you know, we started seeing shots apparently of the Earth in the background with the car floating around the Earth. Now, it's part of a longer mission where apparently it's supposed to head towards the sun slingshot around the sun and head towards Mars. And then God knows where we don't really care at that point. Not really matters. Cause if this was a truly heliocentric model, as soon as it hits the first Lagrange point between here and Mars, <laughs> the solar system's gone. Well, not to mention meteors, asteroids, etc. cetera. And um, they say that that car is going to be wherever, however it's getting from, it's fake anyway, but it's going to be up there for hundreds of millions of years. Right, right. I mean, uh, okay. What are the tires made out of? That, okay, uh, we, we was, could go on and on. The paint. So um, there's if if you haven't watched the footage, and the footage is really only about thirty minutes long, uh, and there were a lot of people, mainstream media, because they were bored yesterday. The stock market was back up. They're saying, "Yeah, let's run this," and so everybody ran this as part of the thing. Although today, it's it's tough to find. Well, there's live footage of Starman going on now, but sure. the original live where it launched and then it showed it poofing <laughs> into space. Right. Um, you know, that's like I said uh, in the description box of this video, but you can go watch it now. So what's more interesting and what puts it into context is the Elon Musk comments that followed during and, you know, before, during and after. Uh, one, he had said that and we will get into the really horrible comments in a second, but they were asking him again, he lets things slip. It's like, I, cause I was thinking, okay, is this a retrofitted car? Did they pull out the engine? They pull out all the weight because why would we care if the thing, you know, had a full blown engine and, a, and, and the steel frame and weigh about 3000 pounds. Why you could strip it down and make it 1000 pounds. The rest of it's fiberglass. Right. And he's going, no, no, no. It's a normal. He, he was saying that, yeah, oh, everything's just like a normal car. And then he goes, well, it is a normal car. And I'm going, okay, so you didn't do anything to this? You didn't drain the fluids? Because I would think that negative, negative 200 degrees Celsius would affect some things like, oh, I don't know. Let's start with the tires. You put just regular tires on that, those tires are going to explode. Even if the quote-unquote moon buggy, remember we saw it ourselves? Yeah, use metal eyes. tires. Yeah. How the tires were special tires. Yeah, special tires. And he supposedly just sent rubber tires up into, into orbit into space uh everything else he, he's going on i mean we're talking about garden variety plastics windshield you know just safety glass you know with front windshield a regular interior everything what about the what about the window washer fluid those lines would shatter in instantly transmission fluid i know it's an electric car so it doesn't have gasoline and oil and 
Do they even do they use a radiator and electric guitar in an electric car? I don't know. I well, know. there's anyway. something in there. There's got to be lubrication of parts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a mess. So all this stuff, it's like, okay, you know, nothing's gonna catch fire, nothing's gonna turn brittle. I mean, what happens to like safety glass when you chill it really, really quickly and then heat it up really, really quick? Why didn't that glass just shatter instantly with as many micro meteors meteors as there are supposed to be around that thing's going to have a cracked windshield in three two one it is it, it the the problem was that the problem where what they had was it looked your first impression when you looked at it you the first thing everybody's mind jumps to is fake and in fact uh, one of the fox, fox news guys he was looking he's going that thing looks so fake <laughs> right in fact elon <laughs> musk himself <laughs> yeah. said during the press conference and i quote it's it's i don't want to screw this one up it's you know it's real because it looks so fake that's literally his quote literally verbatim uh because he what he's saying is is that it's so surreal that your mind can't believe it that that's what he should have said but instead it goes it's so real we know it's real because it looks so fake uh, it's whoa 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 where where are you getting this man why would you ever say this on on air he because said every, it's he also says it's kind of silly and fun but i think silly fun things are important since when <laughs> <laughs> if you mean in science <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's it's your first rocket launch. You're not going to put any sort of decent it's payload silly. in this thing it's at fun. all. If it's, it's yeah, fine. I'm just putting about one of my personal cars in there. He didn't seem sad about it. You know, it's like oh, whatever. Okay, let's let's get to some of the other fun things about this car. And again, we're only 24 hours past the launch, and people are just shredding the hell out of this thing. There's going to be memes going for months on this my favorite was the one i used for my thumbnail for the show uh last night mm -hmm. which is you know, so i did that in probably 10 minutes chewbacca in the seat yeah i've yeah. seen donald trump in the seat i've also seen the uh the crisis actor, crisis girl, actor girl the crying girl on yep. their on her phone <laughs> yep. yep okay there's some things that really stick out to me first off were and and, and these these are kind of paired together wait first off it's totally impossible that they would ever be able to do it and earth is not a globe okay then what <laughs> okay so there are i mean they're, they're trying to mix science fiction with reality and so there are four media references that are already directly tied to the car and this is these are important one you 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 already know about which is uh the live stream which should have just been called spacex heavy rocket blah 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 tesla roadster blah 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 no it was called starman right which was interesting because they actually sort of were trying to put some sort of personality on this mannequin like make him real because really subliminally you're going oh look tesla just put an astronaut into space no no he didn't no it's a mannequin but they called him starman starman and of course david bowie a little tribute there to david bowie david and bowie, a lot of Star people think he david bowie faked his own death i'm just saying what people say or they say he's involved with satanism or something i mean i used to like david bowie a lot when i was younger you know because he's got the lightning bolt thing um so you know of all things why that yeah why that and three other space movie re space media references one of course starman the 1984 movie starring jeff bridges oh, and true. karen allen mm -hmm. which was done very well uh the nav on the dash you know nothing was powered on this car why didn't you turn on the lights you could have hardwired this thing and made it really flashy if you wanted to had a sticker on it that says don't panic and don't panic is straight out of hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy for science fiction buffs out there. And last but not least, the entire convertible in space with astronaut in his white generic suit is ripped off from the opening credits from the 1981 animated movie, Heavy Metal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go into YouTube, type in Heavy Metal intro, Heavy Metal movie intro, and you will see this where a shuttle, remember this is 1981 when the shuttle program was very, very young. The, the shuttle space shuttle opens up and a guy is commuting back home and they literally drop out a 1958 white Corvette with the same astronaut, the white suit, and he drops down into the desert and you know, parachute and, and drives away. Of course, it's animated. You could get away with it completely ripped off from that. Okay. Those are the media references, right? 
here's what's important about that. So they bothered to actually make movie references and you know these, these things that are tied to media. And yet, despite the three cameras that I mentioned earlier, one on the hood, one on the headrest, one on the left side of the car, there is no marketing of any kind attached to the car or the driver. None. That's None. so un-American. It's so, un <laughs> you know full well. It's like, and we're not talking about, look, it's like, like Doritos and Pepsi and McDonald's. You know, it's not like those aren't there. I mean, the company, the, the co two companies that are even represented here, which are SpaceX and Tesla. Why isn't there a giant SpaceX banner on the side of that door and a big Tesla thing on the hood? And why isn't that astronaut? Why is that astronaut in a purely white virgin outfit suit with not a single patch on it? Not a single patch. And I was trying to think of this. I was going, wait, why isn't there any marking? And initially I had thought, and I changed my mind this afternoon. Initially I had thought because you you would you you didn't want to do that because you didn't want to draw too much attention to the brands in case something went wrong. Mm, right? That yeah. makes a bit of sense. It's like if something goes wrong and people are going, holy crap, this is fake. If you're not fully invested in this thing, it's like, well, yeah, let's let's not get too close to this. Let's just put the car up there and you know we won't have Tesla you know, spread out everywhere because if something goes wrong with the broadcast or people are social media completely rejects it, people are going to immediately say it. But I mean, I, I didn't really like it that much, that idea that much because look, everyone knows it's Tesla and everybody knows that's, that it's SpaceX. I mean, are they going to forget because of the red car, you know, because there's nothing on there? And so then I thought, okay, think of it this way. If you want, say you and I work for a marketing company, do you know how much fun you could have marketing the hell out of this thing? Mm -hmm. Like for example, instead of the white astronaut, just play with me here. I'm spitballing. All right. Put, I don't know, a stormtrooper in the freaking driver's seat, and you could put a Borg in the passenger seat. That's money from Paramount, exactly. you know, from, from the Star Wars franchise and the Star Trek franchise. You get the space references right next to each other. This, this thing is going to pay for itself. Or they could have had a bidding war as to what uh, company's name would be on the uh, oh on helmet. One side would say Tesla on it, of course, because it is, and the other side would say, uh, you know, Coca-Cola or whomever. There's and they could raise the money to pay for the thing. Absolutely. There's a reason why NASCARs, the, the cars in NASCAR are, you can't even see the paint. Oh, <laughs> and just, their uh, uniforms or- Their uniforms you know, are just patches. Yeah. It looks like a freaking Eagle Scout had put on everything. Even young boys and girls, softball and baseball teams, they've got sponsored shirts. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe's Plumbing, you know, <laughs> Frank's Electrical. You know, I mean, in big banners, right? This thing, there wasn't, it was such an absence of banners on it. Absence of any corporate logos. And I was going, holy smokes, I get it. I totally get this. The reason why, I mean, we're not talking about the Tesla and SpaceX thing. We're talking, and I think it was out of sight, out of mind. The reason why you didn't have Coke and Frito-Lay and McDonald's and, and all these others on here, you know, full well. And that is, you give these guys power to, you know, remember, let's say you work for McDonald's, right? And I say, hey, man, for, uh, I don't know, a couple million, we'll, we'll, get your, uh, we'll get your logo, four foot by uh, two foot logo on the door. And then what you're gonna, what are you gonna do? You're gonna follow up and say, okay, but I'm gonna send a team down there and make sure it's installed properly. Mm. I want to make, you know, make sure. And you're gonna have people in the Tesla, in the in the Tesla uh, facility from the marketing teams that are gonna be like, okay, I want this placed here. I want it, you know, they're gonna make sure the sure. lighting's right, the reflections right. No, 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 no. They don't want anyone anywhere near this thing. It's a, you know, they don't want them touching it. So that's what they did. They said, you know what? screw it. We're not going to have any, we're not going to, in fact, leave ours off, leave everything's off. We're not going to, we're not going to do, because if you put your own logos on, I mean, honest to God, there's got to be, I know I'm rambling here is think of, I mean, this car goes up there, right? Gets a lot of exposure. You know, there's executives at GM and Ford and Chevy and all the European makers and all the Japanese makers looking, going, why don't we have a car in space? What can we what can we do to get a car in space? Because <laughs> there's, there's people, uh, PR executives being fired all over the world right now. Yeah. Joe, why didn't you do that? Jane, yeah. you're fired. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why don't? Why? In, in fact, people are probably calling. I would not surprise me at all if if SpaceX got phone calls today from people like like Dodge. It's like, well, OK, next one going up. If you're doing a weight test, put a Ram truck in there. Totally will pay you gobs of money to put our freaking car up there. 
So what it, so, so marketing marketing and so the question is why didn't they do that now? Why use your own personal? Well, uh, you know, some would say it was an advertisement for SpaceX slash Elon Musk and Tesla, and that's it. If it was an advertisement, if it was an advertisement, it was a blown advertisement. You find me a Tesla logo anywhere in there. Why didn't why didn't the nav? Why didn't they just power up the nav to constantly flash Tesla? You know, and what was the yeah? What did the nav say on it? Keep nothing. Calm or it, it just had a, it was turned off. It was a sticker that said "Don't panic." Don't panic. Not keep calm. It was a reference, an obscure reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay, so why didn't it say Tesla? Yeah, I know it, it, there was so yeah. Why? Why wasn't again SpaceX and Tesla should have been everywhere on that car, and they, they were notably absent. There was no corporate things on. I mean, it's pure uh, uh, meme gold. It's mm -hmm. a blank slate. That's why people were like running with it. Are you kidding? Are you the way the the new memes are going to come out with stuff on the door. I guarantee it. Next, we're going to see the Pope in the in the Tesla. Uh. <laughs> <Be good. laughs> I wanted somebody to make a, a picture of me in there with my space helmet. And <laughs> and of, and of course, it looked. So unbelievably cheesy. Yeah, and, and uh, Elon said that the crisp colors and the contrast looked so perfect that uh, it almost looked fake. And that too, it almost looked real. too perfect. Where do we hear that before? Oh, I don't know. How about the Apollo Eleven photographs? Mm. Too good to be true. Iconic yes. Apollo Eleven photographs. Every like single shot's gold. Oh yeah, like they were shot from by like you brought in a magazine at a major magazine and mm. had one of their best photographers. Shooting supermodels is like. Boom. <laughs> and, and he didn't know anything about physics. And he's like, and it's like, okay, put the secondary lighting over there. It's like, uh, dude, there's no secondary lighting. Whatever. Just put it on over there. And you Let, know, didn't understand. Let's talk about how the car had the reflection of the globe earth on the side panel, the door. Um, so that while you were watching the car, you didn't really notice that the globe earth was being reflected in it until right. you did. Right. Depending upon where it was moving. And it, it's it, it's subliminal. It's and the color red for the particular car to be used. Red is sex. Red is hot. Red is oh, yeah. fast. Yeah. Attention getting. Yep. And so many aspects to this. Oh yeah, and of course it would uh, if it was white, for example, it would drown out the uniform of the astronaut. Right. And it would also look very NASA like. It would look like the ISS. Why? Why was there a dummy astronaut to begin with, and why only one? Why not somebody in the passenger seat as well? You know, and, and again, why would you even bother using the astronaut? The Chewbacca thing actually was what gave me the idea. It's like, my God, because I was going, yeah, you could use Chewbacca, but the fur would be too much. But the stormtrooper? The fur? <laughs> well, no, because you know, I mean, for God's sakes, that, that who knows what would happen to fur in that sort of environment, right? And plus, it'd be kind of wispy and you don't know what would happen. But a stormtrooper, that's as good as an astronaut. So the whole thing sounds like it was an idea that drunk frat boys came up with and uh, then said, let's see if we can let's see if we can pull this one over on the people in a, a college environment. But yet this is this is the height of science sophistication. Right. Right. And, you know, they were using the standard like hype 80s rock video done by frat boys oh i'm old enough to remember the not i mean screw the original mtv logo where it was the apollo one the second one which was short-lived and you can look it up online if you remember was the space shuttle they uh the the second run of i want my mtv dun, 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 that whole thing was was done with the uh with a heavy booster and sending up the space shuttle but they had to pull it why because of the challenger disaster in 1986 so they only ran it for a few years and then it's like challenger it's like oh this is gonna remind people of those astronauts we can't use it anymore so they never used it again Maybe next time they do it, they can bring, if she's still alive, uh, the uh, actress model, in quotes, uh, Tawny Katayan back out <laughs> Tawny Katayan. from, from <laughs> Mothballs. And she can do um, that song from 1987, Here I Go Again by White Snake, where she's crawling seductively all over the car, but she can do it on the Tesla pre-launch. Wow. Course. Great reference. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that was good. It's good. It's a great. It's a great early MTV reference. It was, so and it, she was gorgeous in that video. You got to admit, very pretty. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it is. I mean, people will be breaking this down for a while. Uh, you know, there's a guy that's already making videos saying that the weather is is it's repeating when it's. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly how how fast this thing's orbiting or why it's even orbiting at all. It's like, look, if you're heading towards the sun, why are you lingering in Earth orbit? Oh yeah, right. Or right, here's another thing. 
Remember, the Super Bowl was just three days ago, right? The biggest advertising window of the year. Oh, I, I totally know why uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX didn't launch during the Super Bowl. Well, because, no, no, not, not even. Because they didn't want to interfere with Mad Mike. <laughs> <Rim shot. laughs> nice. yeah i could see there was a conflict there oh yeah no 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 i'm no no not even yeah i know you could say well they didn't want to risk it during the super bowl in case something went wrong and there's always delays and what a pain in the ass right no no no. you launch it on like that friday before or that saturday you get your footage boom you throw it to your marketing guys they stay up all night and create a a, a little crash uh uh crash course you know don't use last, the word crash. What, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you, you make a you make a last minute um, commercial, and you can air it during the Super Bowl, and it'll be fantastic. But no, they waited until two days after the Super Bowl to. I mean, it's like really, that's, that's when you're going to do it? Like, why not do it before? Because it's a car commercial. My God, the footage they've got now, you could is is gold for a car commercial. Yeah, absolutely gold unless maybe they saw the initial footage and they're going eh, you know the simulations or whatever they did and said yeah you know i don't know if we should pitch this to drunk ath athletic fans because maybe they'd be like whatever i think they've done enough research to know how dumb we all are and no will believe it because of all the other things they've test run on us that we've so, swallowed hook line and sinker yeah but if you're gonna are you gonna go for broke why not why not maximize your if you're gonna go for broke why not shoot a mannequin up in a red sports car oh wait they did that uh, i but again the, the car commercial is going to be somewhat wasted because there's no tesla logo to be found if you're going to push your car you don't see a lot of tesla commercials anyway hmm so hmm. like, are there any test commercials on TV? Maybe, I don't know. I don't watch TV. <laughs> I mean, I've watched enough athletic events. You know, it's always beer and car commercials and pizza. Those are the three, the three big yeah. ones and mostly truck commercials. Men's cologne. Yeah, not even those so much. No? Uh, it's really basic. I mean, pizza. I obviously don't watch sports either. <laughs> pizza, beer, trucks. That's really, if you want to boil it down, I'd like. And some girls in bikinis. Yep, yep, you can throw some of those in there. So it's awful. It's terrible. It was I I luckily got enough of the rants out last night during my show that I oh, could yes. sleep. That Hadn't I done my show last night, I don't think I could have slept. I was And so that is Strange World Tuesday nights at strange. 9 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. uh Eastern, sorry. Six, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Oh, excuse me. Seven, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern, Eastern 7 p.m. 6 p.m. So 8 p.m. your time, whatever. 7 and 10. Doesn't matter. It's Tuesday go. nights. Check, Sorry, your, check your listening. Confused. But I, I named the episode last night uh, SpaceX or fa is SpaceX fake X? And uh, oh, oh, just aggravating because the media really, you know, latched onto it at least for a few hours. And now, you know, they're back on Trump. Well, uh, there are uh, um, the, the live quote unquote footage is being replayed on many channels and you can go watch right. it. And if you have the mind to and the time to go in there and there's people uh, from what I've seen, Carolyn Gutman Day, who's in the live chat, made that suggestion to go in there and use it as an opportunity for education. Oh, sure. Drop a few comments, um, you know, Jaron. And David. Oh, that was so good. On they the were Darren smart. Channel. Check they were smart because they didn't put Flat Earth in the title of their video. And so people that were looking for whatever was streaming, they found them. And I could see people in the chat that were globalists or globe heads or globe tards or whatever. And they were they were confused. In fact, they globe were going, aficionados. It's nicer. It's too long. Mm, okay. And it's got to be short. Glo I, call, I usually call them glo globalists. <laughs> Because okay. globalist is a word we already know anyway. All right. I know some people say globies and globe globe heads is fine. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but I just consider them people who are in the matrix. That's where mm. we were at one point. I know, and I can't I can't be too hard on people, but I for me it was very satisfying to see watching people in the chat see the the car footage for the first time because mm. they all really had the same reaction. They're going, yeah, yeah, ha ha, funny. Where's the real footage? Right? Oh, yes. It's like, no, no, that is the real footage. What? <laughs> I have what? a friend who I've spoke about before. He's deeply in the matrix. He does law stuff for me, uh, kind of uh, on the side. And, you know, for my house and other things. Anyway, I sent him a picture of uh, Starman in the Tesla. He didn't know anything about it because he doesn't pay attention to any of these things. He believes 
everything's true. He believed we went to the moon and vaccines and flu right. shots are good. Right, right. I've talked about this person. Uh, he's my one main contact to the outside world of normal people. Anyway, uh, I sent him the picture and I said, look what uh, Elon Musk just shot into space. And he wrote, they're spoofing you. That didn't happen. <laughs> Even he thought that that was, I'm like, nope, and, now, and then he went real. online, he went online probably yeah. into the mainstream and goes, oh, okay, it was real then. I gave him some links yeah. and he said, I can't believe it. And I said, I'm telling you, I told him everything I tell you about space and about all of this is true. Eventually one day you're going to believe me. Visually. And if you believe in, you know, they, they let things out deliberately. Visually, it was too jarring isn't even the word it broke the suspension of disbelief when you're mm -hmm. looking at it because look there's all sorts of more subtle ways of doing this like i don't know not using a convertible use a freaking s class that's your that's your flagship car no right now vehicle like a regular everyday car even if it's a tesla could survive what they tell us space is I I know, but and just don't right there. Put, no. put the car, put the car up, use a sedan, use the, use their S series, the four door sedan. Don't put the astronaut in the freaking seat. It's a, it, they made it into a joke. Oh my God. You know what? Here's a marketing stand thing for you. You use the S class and then you fill all four seats with some iconic space thing, whatever it is. Stormtrooper. Oh, and take bets on which will melt first as they near the sun. Tell. Tell me raise money for charity <laughs> chat, chat room. Help me out here. Um, t tell me what, who you would fill the four seats with if you were doing a marketing thing. So one's gotta be a stormtrooper. Second okay. one, I think is going to be the Borg. Who are the other two going to be? Can we oh, have God. the one, uh, seven of nine? I always thought she was pretty. <laughs> well, you can't use, you don't, you, yeah, it's gotta be something She's too curvy. She wouldn't fit in the seat. <laughs> well, it's gotta be something generic. Like you can't use, you know, like an old Cylon from the, the old Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. Who would the other two be? The point is, is that would be way more believable. And then you rough up the, the camera footage. Like one of the cameras like off kilter and the other one is having a focus problem. Or, you know, you don't have all three cameras working absolutely perfectly. It's just the, the pictures were, as you said, they're too good. They're, the, the color palette was too perfect. It had even had uh, um, exterior lighting. There was a light below it shining, shining up on the door. So there was no dark spot on the door. Um, Chris Topher in the live chat suggests that they put the three stooges in there. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Nye, the votes are coming in. Oh, Cyclone no. guys, no, 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 Captain no, Kirk, I'm, Luke okay. Skywalker. No, no, no. It's got, it can't be people with normal faces because you, Barack you, Obama, his face no, is not no. that normal. William well, no, Shatner it, says Sharif. No, it can't. No, it's got to be like, like, Bo, like Boba Fett would be good, but then you'd have two from Star Wars. It's got to be one from some <laughs> genre. I'm just uh, looking for, for different genres, but yeah, I, I know what they're going to, you can't use wax. You can't use plastic. It would have been funny if they put <laughs> figurines of you, Eric Dubay and Matt Powerland <laughs> in there. That would have been good. Sent you to space guys. Now can't you see the curve? <laughs> uh, and, and it also, there's some subliminal things happening here where remember SpaceX has never even claimed to have put anyone even close, any humans into space. But now with this little thing, even though, you know, full well, it's not a real person. It's like, oh yeah, SpaceX got that astronaut. All right. It's not a real astronaut, but you keep seeing it over and over back of your head. It's like if somebody said to you, oh yeah, by the way, they're going to send their second astronaut to space. You might not even catch it. It's like, oh yeah. Right. Another suggestion uh, we've got to put in there from DITRH. He suggests Red's rhetoric, soundly, <laughs> flat earth math, and drumroll please, Bob from Globusters. <laughs> nice. Nice. That would be good. Oh, uh, wow. I, I'm just saying that you, if you wanted to make it less obvious, again, subtle. Put in the freaking S class. That's what you guys have been hyping for the last couple of years. The S class here, you know, four door sedan, have it lit underneath. It's like, you know, you got a whole full blown capsule underneath. So what, you know, power a few lights. What's, what's the, it's not going to cost you that much money compared to the rocket. I'm saying is it's just look, jazz it up. Let's look at the, well, I do want to it. encourage, bedazzle it, uh, encourage everybody to go check out uh, the Jaronism channel where David Weiss and Jaron yesterday broke down the launch itself and right. and it, it's really good. And I, I know there's so many other people who've made so many other great videos on this topic and, you know, watch them all and give people you know thumbs up and encouragement too. Right. But what's the bottom line here? 
I think there's a master plan. And I think the master plan is NASA is going bye-bye because Elon Musk can do it better and cheaper. I think that's the long range yeah. plan that this is telling us where they're going. And you know how we've always said that they're going to have to throw NASA under the bus. You're going to have to throw NASA under the bus. Maybe you have this is how it's going to go down eventually. You've got to, and, and yeah, but people forget like the average American doesn't know the official space program has been canceled for years. We haven't had space shuttles for years. Nobody even talked about it. It's like, why don't we have space shuttles anymore? You don't no, need it's them? it's just too much fun for them to be up there making pizzas now. Right. In the right. ISS. So you, a private company like SpaceX, you have them. I mean, seriously, with this particular launch, you're going to have a lot of military contracts. Remember, SpaceX, if I'm not mistaken, is not a public company. Not a big surprise there, by the way, because if it was a big public company, remember, if you're a big investor, you get to look under the hood. Uh, you invest $10 million in a company, you have the right to, to show mm. up and say, yeah. If it was um, the stock market, well, that would have been very interesting. Because, yeah, uh, SpaceX, if, yeah, SpaceX mm -hmm. would have gone through the roof. Stock market's been going there. crazy in the past couple of days today, yeah. being, in case you're watching it later date, February 7th, uh, 2018. Um, Steve Wynn, the uh, Las Vegas uh, hotel owner of the Wynn Hotel. I've stayed there once, actually. Quite nice. Not into Vegas, but I happen to have to be there for a clothing trade show when I owned a clothing store. Uh, anyway, uh, he uh, has stepped down to, to those like sexual uh, harassment allegations. Oh. And, uh, the the Wynn stocks took a dive. and you know, So that's what happens. So this, if Tesla were a uh, publicly traded company instead of, or excuse me, publicly traded company. Mm -hmm. Do I got this right? Tesla or SpaceX are we speaking of? Uh, SpaceX. Okay, SpaceX. Uh, we're a publicly traded company. Then the stocks probably would have been truly amazing oh, for really those who spiked. bought into this whole thing. Oh, yeah. It would, it would, yeah. And, and you would have think, it's like, why isn't it a publicly traded company? I mean, the guy's an, an investor. He knows a lot about investing. It's like what you said. He's big and, you know, PayPal was his, his yes, baby. Yes, because people so, want to, you know, um, take a look under the hood, just like you said. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but you can't. And nope. again, same thing with the advertising. Even if it's simple as like Coca-Cola spending, I don't know, half a million dollars to put a sticker mm -hmm. on the on the dash, uh, that would they would absolutely they would never sign that contract without saying, oh no, we are going to install that sticker ourselves. We're gonna exactly. absolutely we're not gonna mail you the freaking sticker and have you put it on. <laughs> we're gonna be there and, and you you go through that thought process like, yeah, we're not gonna do that. Was well, that sound similar to? Oh, I don't know. How about all the money that could be made out made down in Antarctica? but it'd be too much of a hassle. Oil company shows up in Antarctica, starts flying helicopters around, yeah, and one gets lost. Ooh, or if, you know, Coca-Cola was allowed to put um, a sign on the moon, drink Coke in lights or something right. like that. Right. Same thing. Um, it can't be verified and it can't be done. They can't even fake doing it because there's yeah. just no way. There's absolutely yeah. no way. It's going to kill me though because I, I guarantee there are auto manufacturers that are calling tesla right now i'm sorry mm -hmm. calling spacex, spacex right now and saying but tesla would be the only vehicle associated with spacex what money doesn't talk you can you know you know what dodge mm -hmm. ram would pay to yeah, put but another a truck car company elon musk specifically associated with spacex and tesla that's his baby so. again it's cross marketing who doesn't do that you know who wouldn't who you take I'm not saying that he isn't loyal to the brand. Of course, he wants Tesla to do well. But if another car company pays the money, you know, because they, they say, oh, yeah, SpaceX launched the rocket and, and Ram yeah. got up there. And then they're, then they talk about the deal. What did it cost? And all this. other. It's never going to happen, of course. But Think about how long perhaps this has been in the works, the planning for this. For us, it just seems like it came out of nowhere that this launch occurred. I mean, we uh, unless you've been totally following it and you knew this was going to happen, and I, I didn't. Right. Um, but just like Elon Musk himself, who's Elon Musk? I mean, yes, we talk about him a lot now in SpaceX, but what about you know ten years ago? Did we know about this guy? Uh, did no. we? And now, of course, like like you were saying, how, the, how we got the money, and then PayPal, and then Tesla, and then the steps forward to where he is today, where he can tie a car company in with SpaceX to create this and then take over from NASA, which is what I think their ultimate game plan is and throw NASA under the bus. So there was, that things don't have to be explained as to why we can't land on planets because right. the 
if that's ever pushed to the limit, they can, Elon Musk and SpaceX can say, well, it can't be done. We can't do it. And NASA was lying, but then NASA's dissolved. It's just a right. thought. Yeah, right it's now. a good way of getting them off. Um, mm -hmm. The because uh, remember, I, I'd said many times, you got to figure out a way to give NASA a pass because yeah. literally, it's it's not too big to fail. It's the other saying, I like uh, too big, uh, too big to jail. Mm -hmm. Which is I like the, it. NASA is a you know it's Department of Defense. You can't. What are you going to do to them? You're you're, you're not going to throw it. No, it, it'd be. What it. about the Van Allen radiation belts? We didn't bring that, that up, and that's oh, one of right. yeah, the questions was for from, if you ever were to debate Neil deGrasse Tyson. Or something. From that vantage point, not not that radiation would have been visible from from any camera, but would it have caused problems with the transmission? I mean, because from that vantage point, they should have been smack dab in the middle of them. So why, you know, and, and remember the camera transmissions were perfect. It's not like, remember, uh, you know, no, no little, you know, glitch here and there, a little static here and there, you know, if NASA always had, oh, this camera went down and our transmission went down. Oh yeah. By the way, that, the, the boat, I love that when they were launched, we were trying to, to land that <laughs> yeah. rocket on the barge all of a sudden, oh yeah, we lost transmission. <laughs> <laughs> and the Fox, there was a guy in Fox, he literally without hesitation, like he was reading it, go figure, said that, oh, yeah, we lost connection because of the curvature of the earth. Literally said that on air. And then they got it back 30 seconds later. It's like, wait, didn't you just lose it because of the curvature of the earth? What changed? Wait, 30, 30 seconds. The term curvature of the earth. Oh, flat earthers. And that's what they took it from. And that's why they say it now, because they answer to everything that we do. They do. Uh, uh, it's just so irritating. But it, okay, you want the it's silver lining? It's humiliating. It's humiliating that they have us, not us, but you know, the other us, the rest of the world, believing that there's a red sports car with a mannequin in it flying out in space. Base. Right. Now, even if that were true, isn't that isn't that really ridiculous? Is that how we present our civilization to, you know, pretend that there's aliens and planets and all of that other stuff? It helps reinforce it's, wouldn't and, they uh, have put something on it in case aliens found the craft, like a you know, a, a some kind of a Rosetta Stone, so they would be able to you would think so. Well, apparently something's written on a circuit board. Oh, in the, okay. in the engine that Return sender? <laughs> yeah, that mentions Elon Musk or something like that. Like, like because the car wouldn't. Uh, it it is frustrating, but there's a silver lining. The silver lining is this: it, that it's so stupid, some people are going to wake up. Oh, people! Oh, yeah. Oh, are you kidding? It's a great, still a great recruiting tool. It, it people will look at this, and there will be links in YouTube and and Google and everywhere else you look, which say. Which will tie it to uh, whatever they call it, the space SpaceX hoax or SpaceX heavy rocket hoax, and people will look into it from there because yeah, for it didn't even last twenty four hours to be perfectly brutal about it, uh, but for twelve hours everyone was looking at it. I, the the live feed, I mean, the, the when I was watching the live feed, I think at one point they had one hundred twenty thousand watching the live feed, and it already had eleven million hits, and or I don't know what's it up to now, fifteen million or something like that. It's ridiculous, but. Out of those people, and yes, we put a lot of comments in, and yes, we were in chat, and we were doing all these fun things. So yeah, we will recruit more members because of this, uh, and and subliminally, it will help because again, it was too over the top. Forget about the boosters; the boosters was ridiculous, but the mannequin and the red sports car. And again, I only say sports car because. You you, I, I keep wanting to say Corvette because you never see the freaking logo. If you didn't know what that what it was, yet you, you, you go to somebody a couple of years from now, or, or just the average person on the street, and you just showed him, it's like, what car is he driving? I don't know, red Maserati, red, yeah, generic red sports car, yeah. generic red sports car. That's all it is. Midlife so, crisis mobile. <laughs> in fact, I'm not mistaken. I think the original crisis mobile. I think the original. Tesla Roaster, if I'm not mistaken, was based on was used it used like an other car's frame. It was a Lotus. It was one of the cheap Lotus frames. Wow. So the European sports, it, well, yeah, generic red sports car. So if it's generic, freaking put the logos on there. Sorry. <sighs> I got yeah. going on. So anyway, super horrible. Hope you guys got a, a big kick it up. It's only gonna help us. 
Um, let's tie it really quick to it. I know we know this will probably be the last show we ever bring this up, uh, but we got it. We got to bring it up. You know what I'm talking about? That one time you and I, you know, when it all went. Well, that's funny because right. I, I actually <laughs> absolutely was going to go down that road for a second. I was gonna, <laughs> that unspoken bond between us. Yeah. No, I no, I was going to say that. And you just, it's good. See, because <laughs> we're connected. You and I, we're connected. Oh God, it's scary because I absolutely was going to say that. But no, we should talk about it. The uh, the other rocket launch Ooh. <laughs> didn't <Okay>. happen. <laughs> The other rocket launch that didn't happen, which was uh, Mad Mike. Uh, I got to mention this real quick because yeah, I, 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 I briefly touched on it a little while ago. But yeah, we need to we need to put I, that to bed. Uh, yeah, we got to put this to bed. And I, I want to mention to this I, I, to this good English. The I want to mention this because uh, I I really I, I, I'll get this out of the way up front. Nobody donate any money to his cause moving forward. Don't give the guy Agreed. any more money. Yes, Agreed. the money we spent was invaluable in terms of media exposure. I mean, it was the best. So I, I think the estimates was what, 7,500, 8 grand. And the money raised through IPS, et cetera, all did end up going to Mad Mike. Am correct. I correct with that? Yes, from what I understand. And, and yeah, we, we got some stickers out of it. But the media exposure, and there was two rounds of media exposure. There was the initial one where it's like, he's going to do it, but, you know, a couple months ago or whenever that was. And then this one just before the Super Bowl, and it didn't work out. And from what I could tell, and which is why I volunteered to be the backup pilot for this thing, I, I thought he was I thought he might chicken out. Because why wouldn't he? A lot of people. I knew wouldn't. from the start, and I've been saying, I know it's I never know. gonna happen. I that's why I volunteered to the documentary team. Because remember, there's a doc team that was following him. I mean, like a like a um, uh, Caroline and Daniel doc team. Mm -hmm. was the was same one that did the documentary with us and other people. Well, no, not them, but a different. I mean, another LA doc team was down oh, there. Not oh, not okay. not those guys, but a different one. They were falling and they had talked to me and I said, look, I'm, I am volunteering for this thing because in case he backs out, you know, put me in last minute. I don't care. I mean, this, this thing's, I think is, is important for awareness for whatever it is. So he get, if you guys haven't seen it, you're going to watch it. Although you're going to have a hard time getting through this 10 minute speech about why it didn't happen. He crawls into the thing, flips a couple switches or whatever, like, like the thing's electronic in any way, shape or form. And then he climbs out of it, literally walks over the cameras and says it's not going to happen. And this is on Sunday. I think the, the last time he even attempted it was on Sunday. Super Bowl Super, Sunday. Super mm -hmm. Bowl Sunday. And he goes on to this long technical excuse about O-rings and blinker fluid and muffler bearings. And I'm going to be suing the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. governor and, and, or whatever. The, remember the, the doctor, I just don't he, have time for this. Yeah, the people who were talking going, okay, what's it going to take to fix it? What can we do? And he's like, you know, can you have it done by tomorrow? You know, and it's like, yeah, but I'm going to be in court tomorrow because yeah, I got to get a manicure. It's yeah, almost I'm, that's how he was saying it as if yeah. it's so unimportant. Yeah, it's like, and, I mean, and this court thing is supposedly going to take months. And so mm. that was, and, and he even threw it like that didn't sound crazy enough. He throws in, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm trying to get custody or, or ownership of Charlie Manson's guitar. And it's like, what? what? <laughs> so, and that was it. I mean, it was very nonchalant. It was like, you know, no, no sense of urgency. He didn't seem disappointed in the slight. In fact, he no. was getting, he was getting irritated that people were pushing him. It's like, dude, whatever it takes, we'll, we'll get the freaking parts. Like, you know, we'll get this like, no, no. And that's, that's, that's. Well, he also disassociated from IPS and I don't know the whole story. I really don't. Right. Um, I know that IPS channel helped raise money for that. Yeah. And all the money went to Mad Mike. Now, these are only things that I've heard from Mad Mike and others. Right. I don't know 100% of everything because I'm not involved in any of the fundraising or anything. I'm just a viewer of the channel occasionally and a commenter. Um, IPS's channel or whatever the channel name changes to. Sure. Um, and I know IPS spent a lot of time saying it's going to happen, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And, you know, to have Mad Mike uh, either lie, seems almost like he lied the whole time. To yeah, me. I mean, and led IPS down, you know, down the path, the garden path, as they say, I, I have, which hurts his reputation 
and then all sorts of other things ensued as well but that's beside the point with the whole thing but just between mad mike and ips i think that really stinks it yeah i have mixed feelings because yeah it leaves a bad taste in my mouth when anybody commits to something or says they're going to do it and they don't follow through well, and also the the sticker or whatever it's called that was somewhat expensive, I thought, but whatever, that uh, was put on the the rocket. Then later, the rocket all of a sudden became a different rocket in different green rocket. color yeah, with uh, the sticker being much smaller. Yeah, um, it didn't, didn't stand out because it was white on lime green. So, I mean, I had to so, look I mean, what's this? And then I, he comes out with the Mad Mike, some video, I'm no longer going to be dealing with IPS. Just the whole thing is just, ugh, it's just, I know, I know, it's just disappointing on many levels. That, that I think that that's the kind of thing we should never get involved with. I can't tell people what to do, yeah. but I don't think we should get involved with people when it comes to things that are risking lives or endangering property. Sure. And if he wanted to do that sort of thing, that's cool, but he can go do it in, on his own time and not associate Flat Earth with it because I think IPS got really involved because he thought this would be a great way to bring awareness to Flat Earth. And it's true. It got all sorts of press. Oh, my God. I mean, even the second go round of the, yeah. the second round of media. I mean, we're not talking small hitters, you know, Newsweek, Time, Washington but Post. The media did it. They blew it into some, they blew it out of proportion and said that Mad Mike was doing it to prove the earth is flat, which you. isn't even why he was doing it. He was doing it for self aggrandizement, perhaps to raise money for himself and also to just be uh, just for more of the stuff that a stuntman does. Right. Yeah. And I, I feel bad for everybody involved, even Mad Mike. And so I think that's a chapter that we need to close. Burn that book. Done with it. How did I leave my Skype on while doing hot potatoes? I don't uh -huh, know. You left your Skype on while doing hot potatoes? Oh, I let. Oh, oh, right. I didn't shut it down. Is Well, my bandwidth looks fine, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Every, I think yeah. everything's cool. In fact, um, oh, I just accidentally just turned my Skype on right there. <laughs> just checking. Um <laughs> And uh. and then David Weiss sent me a thing. I'm sorry. Did SpaceX put a Tesla into orbit? Anyway, so uh, so yeah, Mad Mike. The point is, don't uh, don't donate. Be careful whenever you're donating money to to something like that. I but again, I would have. I mean, I didn't personally. It's again mixed feelings, only because there are people that are marketing companies out there that don't even have the money to get the attention of Newsweek and time and the Washington post and, mm -hmm. and all these stories. So yeah, he accomplished that goal, but I think it's a one and done type thing where, yeah, don't, uh, you know, I, for me, you know what I would have done. I mean, I would have blown the rocket up, you know, Ooh. it's like, you know, went over went and he over could have faked his own death mad mike oh my god there's so many other ways you could do it or if you were going to do it at night that would have been a great one it's like now you, we're contributing to malicious destruction of property. i mean oh, the guy god. the guy just wasn't very clever you launch the rocket so you have the spotlight on the rocket you have a, a little blackout for a couple minutes you run off to the side you launch it then you make sure you know where it lands. You get there first. Sounds and, like a modern day Capricorn one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Why not? Why not do that? It was it was just too convenient. The way he did it was too nonchalant. He's like he gets in it, you know, click click click. And, you know, throws up his hands. Well, we're not launching today. And and then you find out. Well, you're not launching ever. Well, you know what a flim flam man is. You know, yeah. I think Mad Mike is a flim flam man. Yeah. And we he, got he caught could, up in all that. He Not could have asked we, for more money if he really I mean, wanted just to. flat earth in general. So, And of course, the other thing, that, okay, well, let me end it on this. The thing that bugged me at the end was why in the world did he change rockets? It's like, okay, so you had this red rocket that had some sort of mechanical problem. Then you stalled and switched over to a green rocket, a brand well, new rocket. You know, maybe there's a reason that we don't know. I I've don't, totally lost track of it. I kept getting emails. When's the rocket going to launch in the past couple of days? And I just yeah. pretty much said to everybody, I hope it never launches. That's what I've always said. All right. And then well, I've never thought it would. I didn't want it to launch because I didn't want him to die. Who wants so death associated with a fellow... I guess he says he's a flat earther, flat earther, or anybody. Right. You just don't know. Yeah. No. So, um, real quick, and then I, I want to get this one out too, which is in, in, I don't know, do you have the ability to go into YouTube right now and just type in flat earth and hit search? Mm hmm. I'll do it right now. I want to mention I'll do it on my phone. have, thank God, at least it's moving its way down the chain. 
Uh, what do you have for your top four? Hold on, hold on. You're going too fast. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Da, 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 da. I don't, no, 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 no. Uh, flat Earth. Okay, flat Earth. I could da, 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 use my da, 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 da. computer. Everybody do this at home. What, shall we? Let's play the Flat Earth home <laughs> No, what are we, uh, we're doing for today or this week or this month? Uh, just, just no filters at all. Just hit it. Flat Earth, no filters. Well, filters come in anyway. New. Should I don't know. Relevance, all and any time. It should always, it defaults to relevance. Yes. Okay. So the top one is by Anthony Padilla. 334,000 yes. views. I spent a day with flat earth believers. I have to mention this. Okay. And, and just so I know, what's number two and number three and number four? Number two is inform overlord. Excuse me. Yes. Overload, oh, not overlord. And, keep, and what's number three? Tell me it's not the submarine. Uh, number three is you yeah, on ABC. All right. And there's the submarine 9, down there in like four or five. Uh, the submarine. Submarine. Yeah, you see a submarine as a uh, as a thumbnail. Nope. Okay, that's all right. We'll we'll talk about these this one first. Okay, so that we have a new number one. I got to bring this up because uh, I love stats. The new number one video in Flat Earth right now is by Anthony Padilla. 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 I think it's Padilla. Padilla. But I could be wrong. I, from what I understand, I you know me being old. I he <laughs> used to be a really really big YouTuber named Smosh. Have you ever heard of that? Kind of like a PewDiePie thing. You should look him up. Smosh. Somebody told me that. So is Smosh and is Smosh. Yeah, I think it's the same guy. So uh, anyway, he if you look at his channel, he's got what? 2.7 million viewers, which is quite a bit. And the reason I have to mention this is because he's out of Los Angeles and he went out and picked mm -hmm. four people. To uh, there's a video with 11 million views called Why I Left Smosh. Yep, there you by go. By Anthony Padilla or yeah. Padilla. So uh, yes. I don't know Smosh. Apparently, it's a kids thing. Kids it's got really... 22 million subscribers, and Anthony Padilla's channel has two million subscribers. Smosh must have been sort of like a um, one of those Logan, you know, one of those kid conglomeration groups of twenty somethings. Or mm, yeah, it's like the titles are. I am. Am I a bad boyfriend? If kid yeah. shows were honest about life. Right. Taylor Swift, dump me, those sorts of videos. Nice. Which is what most people like to watch as opposed to something educational or exactly. artistic. Yeah. Or Heaven or forbid you want to learn something. And I, <laughs> I've known this firsthand. No, we want to be entertained. Show me bright, shiny colors. Oh, wait, look, it's Elon Musk and the Tesla. Which is why <laughs> the lost art of, say, Schoolhouse Rock, where you tricked kids into learning through entertainment, yeah, it's, it's just not that easy to pull off. Anyway, so Anthony here talked to four flat earthers down in Los Angeles. And one of those people is somebody we met down at the, and I met down at the Pasadena meetup, but we both met at the Raleigh conference, which was Lucy Lemons. Lucy Lemons. Go figure. Good for you, Lucy. And I know she's been doing stuff on Facebook and Twitter and wherever else. Instagram? Yeah. Whatever. I mean, whatever the kids are doing. And I'm just not on it. In fact, Karen Karen B asked me, she goes, what's your Facebook profile? It's like, yeah, I'm not on Don't Facebook. have one. I, I get one. asked that about you all the time. What's a, what, like Facebook profile? Yeah. Unless somebody <laughs> runs it for me, unless I become famous enough to where I have an assistant do it. It's like, you know. Update my Facebook and bring me a latte. <laughs> Unless I have one of those, then I want one of those. Yeah, then I want twelve well, not, of those. I'm not going to be doing Facebook. I'm I'm a little too busy doing other stuff. But I just like to say that I'm I'm happy for this because it keeps knocking whatever happens keeps knocking me down the chain. You know my Shrek impersonation that I'm doing. The second, although then of course the second one was inform overload, and you're thinking, well, that jumped up pretty quick. Two days, 17,000 views. That's one of the things you get, by the way, you get special treatment if your channel gets verified, that little checkbox. So nowadays, it used to be easier, but now if you get 100,000 subs, you have to ask YouTube, hey, give me my checkbox. I have, they don't do it automatically. And what happens is when you make new videos, they get a higher placement when they first get into circulation. So unfortunately, inform overload, uh, is also me, although that picture on the thumb with that giant gaping maw, whoever that guy is, I don't like even know. It's going to eat the flat earth. Yeah. I don't know who that is. That is not me, even though I'm in it. I like the name I gave it accidentally by misreading Inform Overlord. Inform. Oh, that is good. 
inform yeah. overload. So you're number three inside a flat earth convention where nearly everyone believes the earth is flat. Yeah. And then we've got the flat earth theory, the conspiracy files by all time conspiracies. And there's NBC news with a story on Mad Mike. Yeah. And um, by that Snoop doesn't have a lot of hits. That'll, that'll start dropping, which is yeah. fine. Well, then there, you're in there too, still within the top 10 or 12. Yeah. Got uh, Nigga Higa. I hate saying Nigga Higa. They're still there. Completely racist. A bunch of uh, Elon Musk stuff. Um, Elon Musk owns Flat Earthers, TMZ TV. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, these, the, these top 20, top the top 30 they rotate around a little bit but they always now that all the giant uh verified channels are in there you know like mashable comedy central life noggin i mean life noggin good lord that was only eight months ago it's got 2.3 million but that's nothing compared to nigga higa that's got what is that uh 10 11 million uh let me see i scrolled on by it um they've got uh, well they've also got higa tv with 867k views and nigga higa itself's got 10 million views yes yeah and i was giving uh crap to michelle for the buzzfeed thumb you know last night i was i was happy because i was like how's it feel to be to be immortalized in the thumb because uh you go down and and the the buzzfeed one where you see that yellow thumb with the uh uh, girl with the long hair. That's that's Michelle from the conference. Mm -hmm. and, nice. And I was like, how does it feel to be on the BuzzFeed thumb forever? She's going, damn it, because you have to give verbal uh, consent when you oh with BuzzFeed. Um, but. an article came out in French pertaining right. to flat Earth. Right. And you and I were in it. Is that and from Neon Magazine, if I'm not mistaken? Yes, indeed. That's exactly what it is. Neon Magazine. Yeah, if and you guys want to have fun, type in flat earth and convert it to a different language, the word. So in French, it's uh, terra plate, P-L-A-T-E. It's spelled like plate. And I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And like in German, it's flash, flat, and, and convert it to a different language and then just put in that, that, those words into Google or YouTube and you'll pull up a whole nother world I and mean, you won't be able to understand it, but it will be, I mean, there's a whole nother section of people out there. You know, Americans were so egocentric from that standpoint. It's like, well, if it's not in English, who cares? No, there's a lot of people in a lot of languages. I remember I did a video on that last year. It was at least a year ago where I covered all the majors. All, they're all in there. German, French, Spanish, um, Russian, Indonesian. Well, where? you translated the article for me that had, uh, you know, write-ups about <laughs> in, in French. Yeah, and, the translation uh, software, not perfect. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, it. I was reading some of it. Uh, I, I wish I could... <laughs> I spoke to the the writer who was wonderful and had a great command of English, but writing is definitely different. And then when you translate it from French, she Back took my it. English, translated it into French, and then put her own spin on it. And then we translated it, or you did anyway, right. uh, using a translator to back to English again. And um, I'm just going to read part of it. A few dozen videos later, Patricia had become a flat earther. Single and childless, she had to face the eyes <sighs> of her parents. My parents are both dead. <laughs> Wow. I had to face the eyes of my parents, and then it says my parents are both dead. Okay. Wow. Just, it's funny because it doesn't make any sense. Why would I face the eyes of my parents? And what a weird what a weird sentence structure if my parents are no longer here. Uh, you know, what I did say was is that I'm actually, I'm very sad my parents are no longer here, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't get to see me become a flat earther because I don't think that they would have been able to understand this at all. And it would have oh, maybe made them bit very worried about me. You, the buzzsaw that I have to run into this weekend, you know, got my, my grandfather's hundredth birthday and the family's yeah. all coming in starting tonight. Oh my God. That's not going to be fun. Well, that's exciting though. It, it is, but they're going to, they're going to try to gang up, you know, it's going to be the, the masses type thing. And but and your, your grandfather who I met, what, two years ago. I mean, he was, Sharp as a tack, had a young girlfriend. I know times Younger, change. Yeah, young, young. Well, young girlfriend compared to him. <laughs> I was about to say, we're, we're not talking two, and she, she was in her 80s. But yes, yeah, she was younger than him. Like it's, you know, he's almost 100, or at that time was a few years shy of 100. Uh -huh. um, and he still, you know, he still 
snappy. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't say no. No, no, no. no. Not he's anymore. Not new. No, it, it, seriously, he's a hundred here in a couple of days. Yeah. So. Well, it's cool. He's lived to 100 and the whole family is traveling there to Whitby Island to celebrate. That's lovely. That's family. That's beautiful. Hey, it is. Here's nice. to him. May we all be as lucky. <laughs> really? <laughs> There's people out there going, I don't want to live to 100. I well, we'll see. Depends. The Depends on your life and you know your your physical condition and mental state. Hey, so, uh, sure. on, a, on a side note, I have to mention, too, I have to do a retraction. Oh, uh, because I had mentioned this isn't a bad one or anything. I had mentioned you and I have talked about different people in the flyers community, uh, obviously, and one of them was Eric you know, mm -hmm. out in Thailand. I go, you know, as far as I know, nobody's actually gone out and met freaking Eric. Eric hasn't met anybody in the community. I got an email this morning. He's met some people, maybe. That's cool. I, I I literally got an email from a guy named he didn't even he didn't even um, put it in the title of the email. He was just talking about uh, he said, in fact, he was the one I believe that sent me the Chewbacca thing, mm -hmm. the Chewbacca yeah. in the uh, Tesla. And he one of the pictures, he sent me three pictures. And one of them is him at a freaking restaurant table with Eric. What's the guy's name? His name's Eddie Lapp. And he's in Bangkok. And he goes, yeah. I'm, and in fact, he just emailed me back while we started the show. And I go, wait, is that you with Eric? And he goes, yeah, It's I met him in Bangkok two months ago. That so, is cool. So there you go. And now I have to retract. It's like, now I can't say that Eric has never met anyone in the Flat Earth community. He actually has. And so, perhaps more than just uh, than Eddie, because, you know, we just haven't heard. No, I think it's just this guy. But <laughs> the, the point is, like, okay, so he, you know, I don't know if Eric's in Bangkok or if he's uh, somewhere else. But the fact that he wouldn't meet Eddie Bravo on a different island kind of worried me. Uh, but again, we're still, and I let me segue into the other thing. And that is, as of last night, which you probably heard me say on the show, he is still on the Joe Rogan calendar for this month. Currently, Eddie, Eric Dubay is scheduled, although it's not booked tentatively, scheduled to debate Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, in a flat earth, whatever it is, cage match uh, sometime this month. I was looking at um, a guy named Eddie Lapp who is on Facebook. I just, and he looks like he lives in Thailand. I just Bold looked guy, him up glasses. on my Facebook. Yes, uh, no hair and glasses. Yep. And uh, yeah. Um, I'll send older, you the picture after we're no, done. Not 21 or whatever. No, no. Um, he's friends with a bunch of sleep. different flat earthers like Joey Rocha and uh, Dave Moore and uh, a whole bunch of people. So um, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. So there you go. So Eric yeah, is next cool. to me. I, 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 I thought he was a recluse and yet here he is at a restaurant with a guy. Well, Eric's got to eat too. What? Not just so your look, soul. If he's going to meet that guy, why isn't he meeting other people? Why? Why? Come on. Why it's not? fine. Whatever he wants to do is fine. Uh, Whatever uh, anyway, anybody wants I, so, to do is fine with me. I can't you know, control anyone. So, you know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Live your life, people. I am not rooting against him when it comes to the debate. If he gets a chance to sit down with Neil deGrasse Tyson, hey, great. I wouldn't care, honestly, who it was, as long as it's not Matt. So, that would be yeah matt matt would i i sorry sorry everybody that's a matt fan no you nobody matt should not be sitting down with anybody to to debate flat he's Earth. going to be a dad soon you know I'm all right let's it. just I'm change the subject now and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no comment hey look no no hey motherhood congratulations hey, fantastic good for you congratulations katie and and matt yeah let's yeah. let's move on okay to something else uh what else do we have i have a bunch of emails a few emails yeah. not a bunch just a few emails that you know i received and why can't i find them there we go um let's see i did a video interview with uh mike williams the sage of quay radio hour i've done two he interviewed me for flat earth right. a year ago just about a little over a year ago and he asked me and i met him at the flat earth conference in raleigh north carolina in november and he asked me to do an interview on veganism and i said okay sure why not and um you know eric being vegan too we'll just tie this all in here so yeah. i did do an interview on the sage of quay uh, uh, radio hour channel on veganism 
And so a guy named David Collins wrote me, he says, I'm a 69 year old vegetarian. I've been vegetarian for about 42 years. I went to a family reunion when I was younger and noticed that some of my relatives were overweight and some were downright obese. I wanted to be less bulky than my relatives. My grandparents were farmers. Everyone ate lots of meat. My grandmother made the best fried chicken ever. I was an athlete from the age of 11 to about the age of 20, and I consumed lots of carbs and meat, but I burned them off with exercise. I started putting on weight in my 20s and put on about one to two pounds a year. I was afraid to go vegan because I thought I needed the extra protein from animal flesh. I kept putting on the weight. The diets that have influenced me, the Zone, Atkins, Wheat Belly, and others just didn't work. And in the case of Atkins, sounded absurd. I just recently started a vegan diet, and I'm excited about it. Dr. John McDougall has influenced me a lot, and I've also been influenced by Dr. Joel Wallach. My wife and I have taken uh, these supplements, a few supplements, to help us out. And uh, he also adds that he's been a Kennedy assassination researcher since 1972. He's a freelance writer as well, and he feels so much better now that he's vegan. And he says... Uh, what happened in the summer of 2016 is he saw two or so links to flat earth interviews, but he thought it was just a whacked out conspiracy. And when he couldn't ignore it any longer, he clicked on a link to Mark Sargent's flat earth clues. And then he ended up finding me and, uh, he's been following a lot of other flat earthers cool. since November of 2016. So awesome. interesting. He was vegan, then a flat earther. And, uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting that he, uh, He's obviously found Mike Williams Sage of Quay as well. Yeah. So yeah. there's so many great discovery stories out there with people and and every, all of them are unique. I mean, yeah, there's some similarities in, in, in the way they approach it, but everybody's got which is again why it's so different. You can't expect any standard approach to convert or persuade somebody to be a flat earther. Well, yeah. I hear a lot of people say Mark Sargent's flat earth clues. That's how I found flat earth. That's why we're together right now talking. And um, <laughs> wish I could have said that. <laughs> well, also, people say, you know, it was Math Powerland that woke me up with photo or painting. People also say, of course, uh, Eric Dubay, the 200 proofs did it for them. Um, and then people find other people that they, they saw their first video from. I mean, it could be anything, really, you yeah. know. And, and Elon Musk and this uh, fake X launch could be be the first video anybody sees that will alert them to flat earth it, it it's will. weird how it works I, it will. as a matter of fact as we were doing the show i've noticed the uh the number of uh stories that are tied to this that are to tied to flat earth so yeah when you cut like if you go into google right now and you type in flat earth the first section now it's divided actually freaking into sections there's so many stories on it the first section of course is mad mike which we will try not to bring up again uh, but the second one is tied to SpaceX, which you were just tying. And, and that is like live science. I'll just read a couple headlines real quick. Yup. Flat earthers think the Falcon heavy launch was a conspiracy. Uh, Express UK SpaceX flat earth shock was Falcon heavy launch faked, uh, followed by the biggest losers in the SpaceX Falcon heavy launch flat earth. Uh, Metro, the Flat Earth Society was has responded after Elon Musk launched. Blah blah Flatter blah. Flat Earth Society, you know, I bet the actual Flat Earth Society has had no response at all, right? Probably not. Right. The uh, the one that DITRH sent me while we were just starting this show, and I'm going to read this after we're done. Uh, interesting from the Miami Herald: Did SpaceX put a Tesla in orbit? For Florida flat earthers say, uh, you know, not a 30 year old University of Central Florida alumni is a flat Earth conspiracy. It did a big story. I'm gonna, I got to read this one after I'm done. Well, so. what about the people who were just an average Floridian who happened to be around the area with their phone? Why do we not see? There, there should videos? be a lot. There should be a lot. Uh, but there I mean, are a few. It wouldn't happen if it's not on someone's cell phone these days. I, I, you know, I don't mean somebody who's, you know, putting out something that's been. Uh, approved by SpaceX or, you know, Tesla or NASA, or I don't mean that kind of video. I mean, real average Joes who were just driving their car on the highway and oh, oh wait, look at that Joe. And then they're out and taking a picture or, you know, they always do take it this way. There were, uh, there were take a it few, this way. <laughs> there are a few out there, but not enough. 
Uh, the more interesting amateur videos are the ones, again, if you think they can't be faked, think again, was of the two boosters that came back down to land at Kennedy. Because those booster rockets, you know, these things are not small. They're they're big. They're big, big rockets. They're coming down way faster than free fall speed. Uh, uh, Brian Someone said, it, was it Jaron or David Weiss the other day on the Jaronism channel yesterday, that it would be like dropping a... Uh, a bus from the top of the Empire State Building and trying to put the brakes on it, oh, yeah. uh, that kind of braking and system. Talking, and we're talking uh, from an immense height. They were dropped at about, we'll round up, it was I think 197,000 feet. We'll round up, dropped from 200,000 feet down to sea level, literally sea level because, you know, Florida, in under six minutes. And, and you watch the amateur videos, if you believe it, these things were coming down like a fighter plane that was nose down with the thrust on, you know, like it was coming down at speed. And then at the very last moment kicks in all this thrust and lands absolutely perfectly. And they came down at such speed that when they kicked in the thrust, they actually created sonic booms. I'm going. Did you see the news reporter who was somewhere talking to somebody else? And they said, they were just discussing the launch. It was wonderful. And the person interviewing the news reporter it was a weird setup said, did you get a chance to see it? And they said, no, but it's so exciting. They didn't, the news reporter didn't even have a camera on it. And then there was a sound of a sonic boom in the back. Right. And then she's like, Oh, I'm so excited. It was so fake. So uh, fake. killed me. I, I had, I, I mentioned this real quick. I had a lot of fun, you know, reading different comments of people's reactions, but you know, the guy I had the most fun with today, watching and listening to was Dell. Oh, did Dell have a field day with that footage? Oh, you I know, didn't watch. He gets irate anyway, right? But watching, you know, watching an American thing, you know, he's like, what the hell? <laughs> he's like, I'm not gonna do his Scottish accent. He was just, he was just ranting, just tearing them apart. Did he was, call Elon Musk a lick spittle? He called <laughs> there was so much Scottish slang being thrown out. I was only getting like one every five words, but I knew it was bad. It was the and, and he had a panel. He had a bunch of people on there and and it's just they were just going off. It was like a like a hornet's nest. You're hitting it with a golf club. It was just, these guys. It, they were so excited. Does, does, again, it, it's it was fun because it, remember how I said we needed a common enemy. And in this case, it was a common event. Which was all of a sudden, you know, the infighting. There's no infighting over the last 12 hours because everyone's attack. You know, thinking SpaceX, you guys suck. And we're gonna, you we're know, gonna come after you. It wasn't it, um, President Ronald Reagan who said, and I'm totally gonna paraphrase because I don't remember the exact. Quote, uh, I know the speech. We, the UN we speech. We need a common enemy in order to unite yeah. as as humanity. Well, yeah. maybe flat Earth is what needs the common enemy to unite. Oh. We have not been fighting that much. I don't mean us, but you know, people who like to fight or point the finger and make hit pieces hasn't been happening too much these past few days because of SpaceX, the common SpaceX enemy. SpaceX has helped. Yeah. It really, it really has. It's diffuse. You take the energy, you know, the enemy of my enemy and and pe people latched onto it. So watching those guys attack, it was it was fun. It was really great. And I'm hoping we can continue that with other things. Uh, I don't know what, you know, SpaceX, it's not like they're going to launch again tomorrow, but the, whatever they're going to do next, because they remember, they're going to continue this because this, the, this, the only reason that rocket launched yesterday was the beginning of what they call the new moon program. <laughs> like, oh, that's uh -huh. right. It's like, okay, I, I hate to, hate to break it to you guys. If you're listening and I know some of you are, is that putting a mannequin in a car and shooting that scene is way easier than faking everything else. Once you get live actual humans into the mix, all bets are off. Your production value has got to be top notch. I mean, look at the problems you had with this one. And again, mannequin in a car. You can't get easier than that. I mean, kids do this with, I mean, for God's sakes, we couldn't, I couldn't even confirm that this was even a full size car. Exactly. Remember the, remember Could have been a tabletop model. Yeah, remember the space shuttle stuff from the 80s that we saw, which yes. when you saw the guy in the background, either there's giant men roaming around space or that <laughs> space shuttle was only about four feet long. This car could have been a couple feet long, which might explain why the nav system wasn't working or any of the other stuff wasn't working because you couldn't make a nav system that small. Just mm -hmm. saying, you, you know, yeah, you could have shot it live, you know, if you're going to shoot it, how I think they did it, just so you know, 
was you just put a you know a car on whatever and then you use the screen make sure you can rotate it and then use the the display screen in the background to display the earth and p- perhaps the sun and just rotate the thing around because yeah. the cams all be relative the so. car either a real car or a model smaller of a car on some type of rotational device yep that's where it. it's planted upwards put that mannequin in there or a model of a mannequin and then uh, you've got the flashes for the yep the sun, et cetera. And they, it's so, it really, I mean, you'd have to spend some time and do the attention to detail stuff, but there's people who do that for a living model Pen- makers, Hollywood, it's Hollywood. But again, that's pennies on the dollar because you have a mannequin, two inanimate objects, literally, and they're not moving at all for any reason. And you're not doing stars and you don't have an extra camera, which is showing the, the booster system. There was a lot of talk on various videos today about stars. Why are there no stars? In space. It was you know, a good I know there's answers to that, but you know they've got answers for everything. Why, it, it, what about really- the astronauts, early Apollo astronauts? Some said they saw stars, some said they didn't. Yep, some they so, did. You know, I don't know. Um, Dame Ethel tripped with me in the live chat, said that Elon Musk did make some sort of quote that said he was tripping balls. I remember hearing that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that was in the same speech. Yeah. Jeez, they, everybody covered this. Yeah. Everybody covered this. I'm, I'm, I mean, literally, there's got to be hundred and something different articles on this covering. Well, why not? I mean, it's an interesting story. The, um, yeah, in the same speech where he said, "We well, you know it's real because it looks so fake." Yeah, he also said later in that that I'm tripping balls watching this. And it's like, dude, that is that is a something you never utter in an interview. Ever. Exactly. In fact, I w- I don't think I've ever I've he never uttered like it like an overgrown kid in the chair when he said that yeah and i don't mean that sort of excitement for life which we all hope to attain but it just in a way where it was a duping delight sort of thing when he said it in a way right i'm just sorry i'm looking at some of the other stories why elon musk's hope the falcon heavy will will spark a new space race between who (laughs) nasa and spacex (laughs) yeah nasa and spacex who's the space race in between what what space where because at I'm sorry, after the Lunar X Prize, the Google Lunar X Prize was completely shut down and canceled. Remember, there was five countries involved there that apparently have no interest or, or just can't get the funding for a space race. The, you're just talking gibberish. Well, you know, the, the whole thing, the way this has been unveiling since, you know, you and I got involved in Flat Earth, you know, 2015, We've all, if we've been there since then, we've seen we've seen so many weird twists and turns on this story that that we're all we're all a part of. We're all a part of this real life adventure story, actually. That's it's just unfolding in front of our very eyes, and it's exciting. Actually, I hope against hope that the things that the powers that should not be are doing, and I'm putting Elon Musk and SpaceX in that pot, are going to be so obviously ridiculous that people will wake up. But we've been conditioned with things like video games and virtual reality, et cetera, to see that sort of thing as being real. And they can pull the wool over people's eyes that way because we're getting accustomed to fake things being perceived as real yeah uh, you know me i i'm a big believer in production value yeah if you're gonna do sort no different than the permed hair in the iss i i get it i get it you you, you don't know how to simulate zero gravity so instead of doing the but you but you want to show it you want to show it so instead of you know if you put a hat on somebody that doesn't help your whole gravity thing and if you put their hair back you know it doesn't so so perm the hair no different uh, i think i told you this one uh it, it's always bugged me every time i see it, it it bugs me in movies and i i see a lot of movies and a lot of television which is we we see it in in crisis events and false flags which is blood the fake blood right everyone knows what color blood is it's red but when it dries like a little scab, it's black. And it doesn't take too long for that to happen. And it does not take that long to happen. However, in every major Hollywood action sequence, after the hero gets cut up and whatever, at the end of the day, his shirt is still red. Why? It's because 
if you made it black, it just confuses the audience mm -hmm. because most of the audience doesn't know what a lot of dried blood looks like. They right. just don't know. They have no concept of it. So, and they've done focus groups. They've shown it's like, why is shirt all black? It's because that is, you don't know, you, you forget. So they have to leave it red, right. even though it, it's one of those instances where reality does not match your, what you want to accept. You want to see red. Yes. Because you, you don't know any, uh, don't know any better. So well, just like in uh, movies, another trick is to wash the roads down with water before oh, you yeah, film yeah. anything. And in reality, if they just used a dry, you know, roadway, it would look dirty or, and it would be distracting oh, like, from the plot. So they hose everything down with water. Right. People are accustomed to seeing that that's what streets look Do like. Do you know who came up with that, by the way? Who, no. who invented that? That was uh, Michael Mann from Miami Vice. In oh, fact, really? he, he create, basically created it on Miami Vice because there was always sunny and and he noticed that after, you know, because they get really hard rains down in Florida, mm -hmm. that the shoot the shots always looked better after a hard rain. He's like, you know what? Freaking bring in the sprinklers. I love Miami Vice. I did. Miami mean, like, Vice was great. But yeah, it's a good point. <laughs> People don't notice that when they're looking at scenes and, and they everybody cheats with that now. Everybody oh, yes. it's them. everywhere. You see red when when you see yeah. people walking around a street, that street is almost always wet now. Right. And that's because the lighting effects, the lighting plays off the reflections yeah. and directors love it. And, and I like, always say to friends of mine who, you know, we all say wet roads, wet roads, whenever with any movie or roads. TV show, wet roads, it's always wet roads, there. blood, you know, uh, Bruce red, Willis red roads in a, and in a red blood red blood. shirt, <laughs> even though he's been in it for 14 hours. Wait. Wet roads, red blood, everything's fake. New T-shirt on Every, Teespring and, now. <laughs> again, I, I think, let, let me sum it up this way. The people will, yeah, there will be a lot of people that, that go and believe the, the SpaceX thing. But there's a lot of people, we, we've gained, that, that will do nothing but help us in the end. I'm looking at the secondary headlines, and they're already. Because it looks to, remember, suspension of disbelief. It is one of the, the the reason why you cry at movies and why you cry reading books. Yeah, you you this we want to believe it, but the stuff that he showed us yesterday was really dancing on the line of suspension of disbelief. And all you have to do is fall out of it for a little while, and that's it. You're like, mm -hmm. okay, and it's like, and then all of a sudden that headline, which you would have ignored, is this thing real? Is it fake? You're gonna look at it. You know, you're going to click on a recommended for you SpaceX hoax. It's like, okay, you click on it and then you break it down. It's true. This whole Elon Musk SpaceX heavy rocket thing could be a form of they live glasses for some people. I think so. Let's hope so. so. And, and the memes are only going to help us. I mean, what that took not long at all for that Chewbacca meme to come out and the crisis girl to come out. I like the crisis girl. Best. Crisis girl. Well, crisis girl's <laughs> a classic. I'm sure they'll grab one of the, uh, the, one of the guys that was stealing beer out in, in the Katrina, uh, all the Katrina memes. Oh, they've yes. Used. Um, I, I like the Donald Trump one. But that was funny too. Donald Trump's going to be good. Oh, it's again, it was almost built for memes because there's nothing on the car. So, Hey, have fun with it. Get jiggy with it. Rub some funk on it. <laughs> ah, well, I guess that concludes our show. It's been hey, fun. It's been uh, great. I want to uh, go in live chat and just say hi to people. Okay. Just because I haven't. I did mention Day Methyl tripped with me. Uh, he puts a, a quote in here, but the fool on the hill sees the sun going down and the eyes in his head see the world spinning around. True. Mm -hmm. uh, bling, bling, the VS of the ISS says the car is so fake and they are in low Earth orbit, yet they can show the entire globe in the footage. True. It's That's another thing we didn't bring up. She's right. That they're supposedly in, quote, low Earth orbit, but they can see the entire globe, which wouldn't right. make sense. They'd have to be much further away. Right. Um, Want to say hello to Ridgeview and Zoe Be Here in Love and F.E. Trixie and Geocentric Ginger B. Flats, Larry Siebens, Flat Earth Vegans. Hi, guys. VZ and Timaeus, Flat Earth Accord Music and Leeds Rules and High Free to You. And did I say Updina Walker? Hey, Chief Crow and the Flat Earth Worm. Some good music there, so check that out. Uh, did I say Stephen Chess already? Maybe I did, but he's so nice. I'll say it twice. Cammy, who goes by Aisling717 in the channel. Uh, Cammy of the Globusters channel is here. I saw Bob from Globusters in here as well. Uh, Andrzejs, 
um, Sky Blue and Flat Plain, names I've not run across before. Um, hope I'm not skipping anybody. If so, please forgive me. Hi to John Watson and James Ben Postal. James Ben Postal. Okay, got it, got it. Peter Mackinson, Lee Redpath, Martin Leadkey, who hurt his back helping his mom. So let's send some good wishes from Martin for quick healing of his back. Because when you hurt your back, it is no good. And bling, bling, the BS of the ISS. And I both have occasional little back problems. So we know, we know. So be careful, Martin Leakey, Flat Earth British. Uh, what else? What else? Karen V is here dealing with some kind of troll. Mark raised by gypsies in the live chat and flat trotter and scrolling up, scrolling up. Uh, uh, I'm, I know I'm going to miss out on a bunch of people that were here earlier, but uh, hello to everyone. And thank you for being here. Please give the video a thumbs up. And later after it makes its way from the live show to YouTube, come back and make a comment because sometimes the people who watch it live don't comment. And then it looks like Nobody likes us. And sometimes that's okay. Hey, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <Ooh. laughs> Excuse me. Wow, I don't generally sneeze. Um, it was a cute little sneeze too. Well, it's, I'm probably going to have a heart attack because of it. <laughs> I don't believe that. The whole thing <laughs> about the Gesundheit or God bless you all comes from an old wives tale that your heart stops when you sneeze and it doesn't. So you don't need to say those things. Okay. Say, are you okay? If some uh, Oh, uh, the, um, what was that Seinfeld line when somebody sneezed? He just made up something. It's like, you're so good looking. That's really, that was the only line he could come up with. Uh, real quick, before we go, I make you guys feel even better about it, everything. And that is if you type in SpaceX into YouTube, and even now, even after all this, and you sort by upload date, it comes in at 490,000. And when you put us in, we come in at a mere 19.2 million. So SpaceX can suck it. <laughs> and on that note, yeah, yeah. it's classy. Well, you know, it's a classy yeah, show. Yeah. We're a classy show. We like to keep it, <laughs> like to keep it classy here. Eat this, SpaceX. <laughs> Uh, thanks to everybody who watched and thanks Mark for joining me yet again. We've had about 240 people in the live chat, give or take. Cool. I appreciate each and every one of you. And I will talk to you again the next time we do a secret show. We don't know when that's going to be, but it'll be soon. Oh yeah. 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 And uh, real quick. Coming to uh, a YouTube near you. What? Uh, and I, I know I, we've still got time before we do it. Uh, I am going to be, I've already got my tickets booked for the flat earth meetup in Colorado Springs the first week of March. They are flying me down, and apparently, I'm going to be doing the. the Bob's going to be doing Globusters from there. That is so cool. I'm jealous. So we're going to hang out, and I, I may actually drink before this thing if there's a bar. You know, yeah, because maybe again, bring a flask. Classy, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be a nice Speaking flask. Of keeping it flat, classy. Just <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring flask. olives too. So yeah, like, exactly. well, that'll be nice. A little so, you know, cocktail shaker. Quite a change from the old place. <laughs> All right. Well, then, till we meet again. Keep it flat. Keep it flat, SpaceX.